back on Marching to Madness this afternoon with a very special guest, a man that's been on here several times already. Now he's on Zoom too. Coach Todd <laughs> Golden of the USF Dons, uh, 33 and 24 in two years with the Dons. Coach, we're all hoping we can get back into a normal season uh, and we can hurdle over the threats of COVID, the transfer portal, the NIL, and all <laughs> these things that don't have to do with the squeak of the sneakers, the swish of the net, and the sound of the dribble. Welcome back. I appreciate you, my man. It's uh, I was talking to my staff about it earlier. You know, we go back to to my days when I was with Bruce at Auburn, and yeah. appreciate uh, the way you've supported our program. So it's always great catching up with you, Kim. Thank you. I, I love doing the Don's thing in the West Coast Conference. It's it's a lot of good basketball uh, there uh, from uh, Spokane all the way down, I guess, to San Diego. Right. You, you, you know, uh, I, it, it's really good. I was just wondering about seeing your players and the emotions maybe of the kids and the staff. Once you guys came together, you know, for the summer yeah. uh, session. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. Um, I think, as as we all know, this was a very trying year uh, this past year in a lot of different ways. And, and we, we felt really blessed that we were able to play games. But at the same time, you know, there were a lot of challenges with testing and, and uh, not being able to spend time with our families and doing different things that, you know, we had to sacrifice to be able to play. Uh, whereas now moving forward, getting through the spring semester uh, with the remote learning, uh, and USF making the commitment to coming back and, and doing class in person, which I think is great for our student athletes. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of our, our players and our program because we, every person in our program is vaccinated, which uh, will really help us, you know, get through the season without any sort of, uh, you know, stoppages. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really good. And as you know, um, it's, uh, you know, some people were a little hesitant at first, but we're able, you know, saw the benefits not only for themselves, but for our community. In, in going out and getting the vaccine. And so uh, I just feel like, you know, it kind of feels like we're getting a little bit back to normal um, in some ways, which is something that we've been really looking forward to for a while now. Coach, uh, as far as your team goes, what was the biggest area of growth maybe that you targeted at the end of last season? And talk a little bit about, you know, as you worked in the summer, how you're working to achieve that. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, it, it was a challenging off season to an extent because we had some, uh, we were at the fork in the road in a couple of different ways. And, and we had to make sure our roster was complete. We had to, you know, we lost a couple of coaches who moved back home during, you know, the end of the pandemic and, and made some family decisions. And, uh, you know, I'm knocking on wood every day because I feel like we kind of came out of this thing about as well as we could, you know, Jamari Bouye decided to come back and use his fifth year of eligibility, which is humongous for us. Uh, guys like Khalil Shabazz, Dima Rivney, came back, Josh Coonan. Uh, so we got basically everybody back that that we felt like was a big part of this nucleus. And we were able to go out and, and get, I think, four, uh, maybe even five transfers now that will really elevate our team, uh, specifically in the front court, which was an area uh, that we needed to improve. I feel like we went out and addressed that with a number of guys. And then uh, our staff has really come together nicely, which has been great. Chris Gerlifson, who joined us from Hawaii, will be our associate head coach. He's done an awesome job. Uh, he's really helped me and, and our staff. And then Coach Mike Plank, who came down uh, from Washington State, has done a fantastic job. And then Jonathan Sapphire, who I promoted from our ops job to an assistant, has has uh, has just really taken advantage of the opportunity. So really pleased with those guys. And uh, I, I think we have a chance to have a really good year. Yeah, you know, I did want to uh, reach back to Don. Uh, Nate Renfro was on the Spurs summer league team. Yeah. Uh, just curious if you'd kind of go over maybe uh, his position, you know, there and how the future looks for him. Maybe not if it's with the Spurs, but professionally. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a great story. First of all, you know, Nate uh, two years ago tore his ACL and yeah. had to kind of battle through that. And uh, Nate's a, a phenomenal young man. He was a 4-0 student for us here at San Francisco. Uh, just a great ambassador for the, for the university and for our program and just continued to work through it and got to the point where he earned an opportunity to play with the Spurs in the summer league uh, in the bubble. i uh, sorry. He, he first played with them in the bubble last year, which was, mm -hmm. he did a fantastic job there. I think he led the bubble in steals and blocks. I had guys from the front office of the Spurs calling me saying, Hey, you know, where'd this guy come from? You know, and I was like, you know what? He did a dang good job for us too. We won 20 every year he was here. Um, but where, where, what I think has been great for Nate and, and this kind of sounds crazy, but, 
he's been able to play the small ball five in the bubble and in the, in the summer league. And in our league at the time, he, he just really wasn't big enough to play the five because we had guys like uh, Karnuski from Gonzaga, Zach Collins, Eric Meek at BYU, Jock Londale from St. Mary's, you know, guys that are all NBA players or just about now. Um, but his ability to play the small ball five makes him really, really good because he really puts pressure on the rim and the roll. Uh, great off ball shot blocker and just really intelligent on the floor. Good IQ knows where to be defensively. So uh, I think he's one of those guys that will continue to get better as he gets older. And uh, it, it wouldn't shock me to see him get some, get some run in the league in the next couple of years. Yeah. Well, two guys that are going to get some run, as you just mentioned, uh, in the WCC this year. Obviously, your backcourt's intact. you got to be loving that with Khalil Shabazz yeah. and uh, Jamari Bouye, who led you with 17.3 points per game, and Khalil had 15. Uh, you know, obviously, your thoughts on having those kids back as they were your two leading scorers. You know what? It, it's, a, it's a very good feeling as a coach you know, to have yeah. them out there, right? Yeah. And uh, we, we're super blessed with Jamari and, and the fact that uh, he's taken advantage of his extra year due to COVID. And, and Jamari's a, another yeah. great example of a good young man. And uh, his parents have done a wonderful job with him. He's actually working towards his uh, master's now, uh, taking full advantage. You know, just a great student athlete and, and obviously a, a phenomenal player. I think, you know, this is a big year for him. Uh, he, he, in my estimation, he's an NBA player. You know, I've seen enough and uh, I feel like, once he continues to get more of an opportunity to show what he can do on, on a bigger stage, uh, you know, NBA teams are going to fall in love with him because he's had, he has great size, you know, six, one, six, seven wingspan, and really just has taken his three point shooting to another level. And one of the most underrated things about Jamari is he is a incredible two way guard. He really, really defends. And that's something that uh, certain people might take for granted, but you know, people in the NBA appreciate and uh, Khalil, uh, just a wonderful young man. Uh, kind of a spark plug for us, somebody that brings great energy, enthusiasm. He's a connector. You know, guys on the team all love him. Uh, you know, so to have his, you know, he's old, he's experienced, he's proven he can do it at this level, and I think he'll he'll give us a big lift. And, uh, you know, another guy that, that's new is Gabe Stefanini, the transfer we took from Columbia. He's, a, mm -hmm. I think, he's another guy that's going to play a lot for us in the backcourt, really good in the ball screen, compliments Jamari and Khalil really well. Uh, great shooter, big, strong. You know, I, I think with him and Khalil, he's more of a, the thunder and Khalil's the lightning. You know, Gabe's more of a slow, uh, you know, just physical pick and roll guard. And Khalil's the guy that nobody can stay in front of. And a little like Reggie Bush and Lendale White back in the football days. There you go. I yeah. was That was my boys right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they, we'd they, have had this system. Now, I, I hate to digress, but USC yeah. would have won two more two more national championships. I feel, you know, the, our ability to kind of do different things with those guys will, will go a long way for us. Yeah. Uh, the leading, your leading rebounder, help me with his name. Which, uh, is it, which kid? Uh, Josh? Uh, uh, Rooney? Oh, Rooney. yeah. Dismitri Rivni is how it's pronounced. Rivni. He's built Russian. Yep. Yeah. yeah, my bad. Jeez. No, it's but, all good. But anyway, I, you know, he can tee it up from three uh, as well as rebound. And you got Josh Kuhn, and, and so your post, where he started 23 of 25 games as a fresh, freshman, your post has got good experience in there, and then it's got good versatility. Yeah. No, I think in, uh, what's going to be really helpful for those guys is, you know, the transfers that we brought in with uh, Yaya and Masalski from San Diego and Patrick Tappe, who was at Duke last year from Columbia, uh, we just made it official. We added Bova Markovetsky from Washington State, 7'2", 260. So we have some really, really yeah. solid front court five men, and that will allow Josh to slide over more to his natural four spot, and Dima will be able to slide back to his three spot and just make us really big and athletic and long. Um, and Dima, you know, he, I expect him to have a really nice year. He's, he's improved a lot, and uh, as you mentioned, you know, he, he shoots the ball about as well as anybody I've been around, and at 6'8", can really get it off when he wants, and Josh – uh, is a guy that thrives when he's playing out there with really good players. And I think we'll have more usage around him this year, which will make it easier for him uh, to be effective. So it's a, it's a really, you know, it's an old team. And it's something that I'm, ex I'm looking forward to in terms of coaching these guys. I mean, are you, are you going to go, not to give a whole lot away, but are you going to pound the ball with two posts? You're going old school? Oh, man. You know, it's funny because we, we, we were really uh, – we were really, we played a lot of five out last year, right? And yeah. We right. Out and a ton of threes. And, uh, 
you know, while it was great when we were beating teams like Virginia and Nevada, it also wasn't great when we didn't shoot it well. So I think we'll be a little more balanced this year for sure. And uh, take advantage of our personnel. And, and there might be times, you know, where you feel like we have some advantages on the front line where we'll play a little more old school and, and bang it in there three round two. Um, but, you know, I, my heart is definitely, uh, it, it aligns with more of the four out, one in, you know, spread and play yeah. type of things that we've been running. So, uh, we'll, we'll definitely still do that, but I, I hope to to be a better head coach and have a little more balance this year. Yeah, I, and I noticed, I was going to say this, we kind of got uh, into it earlier, your, your roster, the height on there. You got yep. many guys that are like between 6'7 and 6'10. So you yep. flip it to the defensive end of the floor. Yep. And how do you feel about, you know, you got length, you got physicality, and, and then you got athleticism. You know what? It's uh, I, I'm I'm honestly more excited about you know what we're gonna do on the defensive end this year in terms of schemes and styles because we've been pretty uh, steady that way for a while. And last year we won. You know we had Tavi and Josh played a lot of the front court minutes as we just discussed. So we had to you know do some things different because we weren't very physical. Whereas now with Yali and Pat and, and Bova uh, and even Jonas Visser, we have four guys that are you know six ten two forty or bigger that will really be able to anchor us and protect the rim. And it'll allow us to be a little more aggressive on the perimeter and, and clean up some mistakes on the back line. And, and uh, so I think we'll be, be a little more creative in terms of what we do defensively as well. Well, you know, uh, we all follow, I was going to ask you this, we all follow other sports, right? And you guys got something going on out there in the Bay Area with baseball. The Giants, I mean, are, are phenomenal. I mean, they're a good yeah. watch. Yeah, uh, and you can't shortchange the A's there across the bay. Just sure. curious if you've uh, been able to take in any baseball, although you're so busy with transition, you know, uh, off of the COVID year. But yeah. uh, man, you you know, it's it's a lot going on there. Well, you know what? I'm a I, I'm a diehard sports fan, to be honest, Ken. And, Me too. And I, you know, obviously, I'm I'm a basketball guy. Uh, through and through but I, I love baseball I love golf uh, football mm -hmm. so uh, I took the family to a, a Cubs Giants game about a month ago when they were out here I'm a big Cubs fan randomly okay. uh, yeah. so that was pretty neat and uh, I haven't been over to Oakland but I, I'm a big fan of uh, their, their organization and the way they operate they do more with less every year and it's something that we try to emulate here at, at USF and and the Giants are doing that this Year, right I think everybody thought they'd be okay you know they expected to be around 500 this year and make a little bit of a jump from last year but the job Gabe Kapler's done with that team and and the consistency in which they played with all year uh, you know they're there I, I think people would argue that the Dodgers are a lot more talented but the Giants mm -hmm. are just a great team and that's something that they've proven uh, over the course of the first 125 30 games of the year and, uh, you know, they, they beat up on my dad's Mets the past couple of days, and that, that hurt his feelings quite a bit. But, uh, mm -hmm. man, they, they, they just seem to be in every game, and, and they win all the close ones. And uh, now that they have Chris Bryant, uh, I, I do root for them and him specifically to continue on. So uh, it, it's a great sports community right now with the Warriors. I really like what they've done in the offseason. Two. two young draft picks. And uh, I, I don't think they're done. I think they'll make some more moves. And obviously the 49ers, I think, are primed to have a pretty dang good year also. So it's a good time to be in uh, in San Francisco in the Bay Area for sports. Last thing, Coach, name, image, and likeness. Uh, you know, they, they've worn it out already. I mean, on, on the yeah. talk shows and whatever. I'm just curious, like, you guys, the WCC, there's no football per se. Sure. How, how does that change? The, the name, image, and likeness piece in a situation where there is no football? You know, it's a, it's a great question. I haven't really thought about it um, that way specifically. You know, I think, um, I, first of all, I'm a proponent. I, I'm a fan of this. I think, uh, you know, giving these young men and women the opportunity uh, to, to get some extra cash in their pocket based off of what they're able to produce themselves is great. You know, I think it's – uh, it's capitalistic. I think it's what, you know, our country was founded upon and, and something sure. that was, we were a little late to that game in the NCAA. And I think it was, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, I think the NCAA gets a bad rap and, at times and I'm not sure it was that they didn't want to. It's just how they had no idea how to regulate it. And I'm sure, I don't think they really have a great feel on it still, um, yeah. but not as worried about it. Uh, what, why I like it is because uh, it gives these guys an opportunity and, and it's meritocracy. If people want to, 
you know, uh, give them some money to advertise through their platforms or use their, you know, names or pictures. Great. And if not, then, then that's fair too. And, uh, just a, just a good opportunity. And some of our guys, uh, have taken advantage of it at a smaller level. And, and I hope over the next, you know, six to 12 months, they're able to find opportunities that, uh, support them even more. Coach Todd Golden out on the hilltop in San Francisco. Coach, I'll get you, I'll let you get back now to all things Don's. It's great seeing you, meet, meeting up with you on here. Hopefully you guys will play out here somewhere in the south or somewhere sometime and I can come see you. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting Bruce every year trying to trying to yeah. get us back in the Auburn Arena. I'd love to uh, be able to take our program out there for, you know, a football weekend and maybe play them on the Friday night before a game or something. And uh, yeah. I, you know, we weren't able to do it this year just because of the uncertainty with the schedule and travel and everything like that. But uh uh, I'm hopeful next year that we might be able to slide down there and, uh, and experience it. I love that part of the country. Some my wife and I had a great time uh, when we were working at Auburn and, and it spent a lot of time in Atlanta as well. And, uh, you know, it's, there's great people down there. So we'll, we'll be trying to make it out there soon. Coach Todd Golden. Coach, good luck and uh, hope uh, you guys do well. I know you will coming into uh, what we all hope will be uh, – just a relief, you know, with a with a really solid basketball season. That's it. All right, my man. I appreciate you. We'll catch up soon.